My name is Philip Ortiz. I'm a, a graphic designer and artist in the Midwest. Uh, I've got four kids and uh, my wife and I have been married for 16 years. Um, I do uh, art and design in my basement. Um, I'm actually working in my basement alone a lot and uh, it's in that spot I've had this uh, bit of a wrestle in my heart of value and, and where I get value from and, and who I am and, and as a man and as a father. and. I actually started working uh, from home uh, in order to spend more time with my family and uh, I discovered this tension uh, and this uh, struggle between uh, being a good father and uh, working and, and this desire that seems to come from the outside to make a name for yourself and, and have people know you and, and follow you and do this great thing. And, uh, God showed me Joseph, uh, Joseph in the Bible, not not Joseph, Prince of Egypt, but uh, Joseph, Mary and Joseph. And uh, he said, have you considered Joseph? And I thought, no, not at all. Of course not. No, I don't think most people do. And um, I went back and I read his story in the Bible and uh, I started realizing that here's a man who lays everything down, he runs into this chaotic situation, a situation that could scar him for life, could ruin his reputation, it could um, cause him to people to not buy his products, people to not, you know, respect him. And But he takes this woman, he makes her his wife, and then he adopts Jesus. I think when we look at him and we realize he's kind of in the background and we don't see him, we take that as a bad thing, but I, I'm actually realizing that maybe that was what God had called him to do in the first place was to lay down his, his purpose and his identity and his accolades and his stuff in order to adopt Jesus, to take Jesus as his own, to take Mary in, in as his wife and to, to love them. And so perhaps the silence is him understanding that the storyline of his life actually is not about him, but it was about Jesus, it was about his family. And even though we don't talk about Joseph, he gets overlooked, he's on the Christmas cards, but no, there's no songs about Joseph other than one or two phrases. There's not, nothing about him. And yet here he is, the first person in the Bible, the coming of Jesus to exemplify a heart of adoption. I mean, he, he's basically, his act of obedience is doing exactly what God did in saying, I'm gonna go into this scandal. I'm gonna go into this place and I'm gonna take someone who's not my own and adopt them as my own. I'm going to lay down my life in order to see that. And in doing that, I mean, it was Jesus. But in doing that, he is actually, Joseph is actually this beacon, this statement of fatherhood and what fatherhood is about. And um, uh, it's changed the way that I look at my life. I look at my family. I look at the chaos of, of sometimes raising kids and understanding that maybe... We say this, we use this language often in the church world, but I don't think it resonates, that it really isn't about me. It isn't about my name and my agenda. And perhaps if I was at investing more in my children as a father and more present, that I would really make disciples. I would really give them this understanding of God as a father because when we... You know, if I'm never there for my children, if I am busy doing my own thing, in a way I'm communicating to them that God's too busy for them, that God maybe doesn't see them and God maybe doesn't care. But when I'm with them and I'm engaged with them and I give them all that I have, I'm, I'm, I'm giving them this storyline of, of, of how God cares for us and how God speaks to us. There's this idea in the Bible, and it's a good and true idea about a, a, it's in Proverbs about a husband being respected at the city gates, and I think that's great, but it's never at the cost of your family. Part of my story as an artist is that when I feel something strongly, when God speaks something to me, or I want to remember something, I paint it. Um, I, I need help remembering things, and so I knew that the Lord was asking me to paint this picture of Joseph. The process of this painting was uh, unique in, a, in and of itself. Um, I developed this process, basically it was a spontaneous thing that I felt from the Lord of painting um, to take uh, ink and a shish kebab skewer, a wooden one, and I dip it in there and I just begin to paint. 
and, do, and move things around. And I'll add details with uh, some other brushes and stuff later, but I worked on this picture for six months. It didn't take me six months, but it was just, I'd sit down and this issue in my heart would come up of, of value. And so I'd have to give that to him. I'd have to process that value. Um, and just realizing that my value is 100% from him and who he says me, who he says I am as a son and not what anyone else says. We're not just filling a role to a greater cause, but we're interwoven, whether we're ever celebrated or not, into a story that God has for us. And uh, we're creating a lasting legacy and a purpose. And uh, if there's one thing that I could give to my children, both in action and in word, would be to say that I love them no matter what. That they don't have to prove anything. They don't have to do anything that they they are valued for who they are and the more I can show them that as a father by being present by being there by leading them by showing them that I sacrifice who I am for them that they'll see a picture of God's heart for them that God is a father who willingly lays down his son lays down what he values in order to see us become sons and daughters